You know, if I stand here, this is a perfect fit for me. So I don't know, Edna, is Edna's face coming over here? <laughs> Edna, stand here. It's not made for Edna, so you're not going to preach here. It's only me. <laughs> it's good to see you guys. Um, I'm going to speak this morning to encourage you, you guys. I'm going to speak about God's ways and God's thoughts. And, and it's the biggest lesson that I've learned in the last four months. And I just want to give you a little bit of my testimony and things that have happened with me. Do you know we all go through stuff in life? And um, th the biggest thing that I've learned in the last four months of my life was to really come to the place that whatever I do, if the Father didn't say it, I'm not going to do it. And I'm going to say it again. Whatever I do, if the Father don't say it, say it to me or reveal it to me, I'm not going to do it. That's what I've learned. And I've discovered that many times I was led by my emotions. I was led into stuff and do things because of my emotions in the last two years. And God basically brought me to an end, brought me to a stop, to a standstill. Sometimes circumstances play a role. God don't create bad circumstances. I first want you to understand that. That's not His purpose. That's not His plan. That's not in His heart. That's not His character. He never ever create um, such a bad situation so that He can teach you a lesson. That's not how we learn in life. What we learn in life is by beholding Him and His love and His mercy and grace. And that is what transformed us transforms us you are not transformed by circumstances you guys still with me never in a, nowhere in the bible does it say that we are transformed by circumstances but when there is circumstances it's a testing of our faith have you seen that god don't use the circumstances to test you is when you are in the circumstances it's a testing of your faith it's a testing of are you going to stand through the circumstances by resting in what Jesus has done for you? Resting in the fact that you are God's child. That's the questions that you have to ask yourself. Okay. So just to tell you um, a little bit of, of what have happened with me. God really called me about a little bit more than two years. How long is it now, Jenny? Uh, since the first time that you guys invited me to come and preach here this is like three years ago yeah about three years ago god really called me just before that three years period that i was in come god called me to really to the united states to preach the gospel in the united states and in february this year the doors closed on me on the border like that bang and three times i tried to come back into the states and every time i've been blocked um, there was two times that I went through that they allow me to go in, but the other times they, they blocked me and they actually interrogate me, you know, and I was surprised that for someone who preached the gospel, um, I was really surprised that, that they would spend so much time and energy on me while there is so many other hundreds of people going through the border at that same moment and they wasting time on me and it was just, but it's just, just circumstances. So the door basically closed on me. And I didn't un understand it. Um, but it was really difficult for me. So for four months, in a period of four months, I go through a lot of stuff that really make it difficult for me. And one day, I fall on my knees and I pray. How many of you have prayed sometimes and then you say, God, I need an answer now for this problem that I have. And then when God speaks to you, He gives you a different answer. Have you, see, have you seen that before? This is so funny because this is just how we work. And, and I was, I fall on my knees and I, and I pray and I say, God, I have this problem. Please speak to me about this problem. And when I fall on my knees and pray, I was really on my knees praying. I was like in a position of desperation. I'm saying, Jesus, I'm on my knees. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not always praying on my knees. I mean, you don't have to be on your knees when you pray. Paul say, I bow my knees to the to the God of heaven and earth. It's, it's a form of humility, but I bow on my knees and I say, 
speak to me, Father. And I, I got, a, got a verse in my mind. Uh, go to Acts 14. Specifically, verse 3 came up. And I thought, okay, that's cool. So I go there, and this is what it says. Therefore they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of His grace, granting signs, wonders to be done by their hands. I said, this got nothing to do with my problem that I have. <laughs> this, why are you telling me this? I don't need this. I need an answer on this problem that I have. He says, well, here's the deal. The problem is already dealt with. I want you to focus on what I've called you to do. Isn't that what the kingdom is all about? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And he bring me back to speak boldly in, my, in the Lord. <laughs> I will bear witness to the word of grace and granting signs, wonders and miracles to be done through your hands. I said, okay, cool, but I don't even have an open door. And I begin to look at at, at places, before that, I, I started to look at places like Pakistan and Uganda and Africa and Europe and want to go back to South Africa because the door closed on me to come to the United States. I said, well, that door is closed now. You call me to the nations. You want me to preach. So, okay, all right, I'm going to begin to look out there in the world where a door opened for me and I'm going to go there. And, uh, and it seems like doors begin to open up. And one morning I woke up and he said to me, you're going to the United States very soon. And I'm like, it's impossible. We tried three times. Weren't you there? Can't you remember what I went through? You know, and, uh, and, and no, you're going. And I prayed that day and I saw uh, two doors with the United States flag on. I was not even praying about the United States, praying about stuff. I saw this door open up and I saw a harvest behind this door. And I saw myself walking over the threshold. And I said, are you really serious about this? You want me to go back to the border? And you want me to go over? And um, I drive that day. How many of you know it's a law in, 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 in Canada? I don't know, in the United States too. If you put up a, a, a flag, if you put your, uh, another country's flag up here in the United States, you have to put the United States flag next to it. Is that a law? It's the same in Canada. So you have to do it that way. If you put up a Canadian flag, you have to put the uh, a United States flag. You have to put a Canadian flag next to it. You can't just hang it on its own on your land, because if you on your land put a flag up of South Africa or the United States, you are actually claim the territory and say this is United States land. This is what you're actually saying, basically through it. If you some break it down, and I drive and here's this farmer who had in the middle of his field this United, uh, United States flag and it's the only flag there. And I thought to myself, dude, you can get in trouble. You need to hang another the Canadian flag next to it. And the Lord said, no, I put it up there to speak to you. I speak to you through that flag this morning. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I spoke to my friend down in, in, in Indiana, Steve Chubb. We just had a conversation on the phone the other day, actually earlier this week. Uh, and we just had a conversation on the phone about other stuff. And when he put the phone down, he said to me, Okay, bye, Peter. See you soon. And I didn't discuss anything with him about the United States. And I thought, why would Steve say to me, see you soon? Is he coming here or am I going there? So I began to plan on Monday. I said, Okay, God, you say I'm going. I will go to the border this coming Friday. And I'm telling you right now, if, if I have problems and you... I will, I just know I can't hear your voice anymore. And there's something huge wrong with me. I have to turn around. But I believe you spoke to me. I arrived Friday at the border. He didn't even ask me questions about my ministry. He asked me all kinds of other questions and stuff. Because he, I, I, I told me, where are you going? I said, well, I'm going to Marshall's in Minnesota to Kathy. And he began to ask me questions about Kathy. <laughs> Lots of questions. Nothing about ministry or anything. And then he said, okay, Reverend Swart, you can go. And I'm like, what was that? And then I drive and I'm like, he said, you can still hear my voice, Peter. And you are here because I have decided that you're going to be here. And I got a plan through that. And all the things that he said to me in the last four months become together like this in one moment. And I start to weep driving so excited. And I say, Father, 
I just realized His love for me. Don't you think it's interesting how God worked with us? The easiest way for me was going to England. I got friends with churches there. Going to Europe. I got friends with churches there. I can right now pick up the phone, fly to South Africa and preach for, preach for a month non-stop every night. Are you guys with me? But He just said to me, you're going to go to the States. He sent me into the most difficult situation. Are, are you guys with me? He really wants me to hear His voice in the impossible. I want to challenge you this morning, and this is where, why I'm telling you this. I want to challenge you this morning, is that God, most of the time, speaks to us in the impossible. He speaks to us, and then we look at the natural and we say, Oh, this can't happen. I can't tell you how many times it went through my mind. Have you been stopped three times in four months every time turn around? At the last time they say to me, we're going to expedite you and put you up five years not entering. That's what they threatened me with the last time. I said to the Lord, this is what they say to me. If I go there again, they're going to... There's still a law that they can't get away with. I am, I'm allowed to come into the United States. Actually, if, they, if we really begin to fight this thing. But who wants to do that? Who wants to pay for lawyers thousands of dollars and stuff? I'm led by the Spirit of God. Are you guys with me? But God is, God is sending you. If God say to you, go and do this. In our natural mind, most of the time, the, 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 the things in the natural speak so loud. And try to kill the Word of God. And God's ways and God's thoughts is he wants you to to go out in faith you may be sitting here this morning and you have sickness in your body believe me sickness got a voice how many of you know the word of god faith comes by hearing the word of god that's true amen but if you have pain in your body it constantly speak to you thank you you guys uh you guys are all healthy so you guys don't know what i'm talking about are you with me but, but sickness is speaking to you all the time. Circumstances in the natural is speaking to us all the time. But what I have learned is I have to become sensitive to the voice of God's kingdom. Right now, God's kingdom is here. God's kingdom is in us. God's kingdom is bigger than that which is in the world this morning. Amen. And I want you to turn with me in your Bibles in Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 55. And I'm going to read to you. Uh, just a, a little a, a passage there out of Isaiah 55. And then just begin to share with you and encourage you in the area of, of our thoughts. That our thoughts line up with God's thoughts and our thinking line up with God's thinking. Amen. Are you still okay? Hallelujah. Let's go. I'm reading from verse 7 and he says here, um, Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Now, first of all, I want to bring your attention to that. Say pardon. So God say here, God say here, um, leave your ways, leave your thoughts. You can, actually God say, you can leave it. You can, can come out of, your unrighteous ways and your self-righteousness by just understanding that I have pardoned you. I have forgiven you. How many of you know in the new covenant we are declared innocent. We have been made righteous through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Okay. Abundantly pardon. God don't say I will pa pardon you once. He say abundantly pardon. And this is speaking towards the new covenant. This is a type of the new. This is a prophecy of the new co covenant. Okay. Then he goes on and he say, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isn't that incredible? So God say actually here, leave your ways, leave your thoughts, come and line up your thoughts and your ways with mine. Because I got a better way, come on. I got a different life for you. I can bring you out of where you are right now by you just switching over from your thoughts and ways, coming into my thoughts and ways. And then God actually give an answer how to. You know how to? 
by believing that Jesus has made you innocent. Why is that so important? Because if you have guilt and condemnation in your heart, you can't hear His voice. You can't see His ways. You agree with me? So that's why the new covenant, God come and God the, uh, take the heart of, of, of condemnation or the heart of guilt out of you and God give you a naked heart or a fleshly heart which is sensitive to His voice. But the challenge is going to be the things that's in the natural that is raging against you. But you need to understand this morning through the finished work and the blood of Jesus Christ, you've been qualified to function in God's kingdom. Isn't that beautiful? How many of you agree with me this morning that the kingdom is God's reign? <laughs> Those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, say gift, will reign in life, in this life, through the one Jesus Christ. That one reign is a kingdom word. That means God say, if you begin to receive the abundance of my grace, because I have made you righteous, come on. See, if you sit around and say, I'm not good enough, I'm unworthy, I don't live up to the standard, you cut yourself off from the abundance of God's grace. But if you sit here this morning, in spite of your, bad, your past, in spite of what you've done wrong this morning, God has given you a gift of righteousness. Come on. It's a gift. It's not something that you can work for. He made you righteous. So because He made you righteous, you qualify for the abundance of grace. The church don't have a sin problem. The church have a receiving problem. See, we focus on the weaknesses instead of focusing on, hey, it's for free. I can receive. Amen? Thank you for your enthusiasm. You may sit down now. So God say, God say, I abundantly pardon. I make you righteous. I make you innocent. So that you can qualify to come into the ways of my kingdom. The thoughts of my kingdom. Isn't that beautiful? Right now, it doesn't matter who you are. You qualify to be part of God's kingdom. You qualify to hear His voice. <laughs> you qualify this morning to be led by the Spirit of God because you are a son. You're not a slave of the world. You're not a slave of the, of, of, of the religion, of the law. You have been made a son in the kingdom of God. It's beautiful. So God's ways, it, it's, I look at this whole scenario that I went through. Did I make mistakes through this period? Yes, of course I did. But all those things brought me to one thing that I'm, at that place that I, and I, how many times I prayed and say, Jesus, I want to be like you. Where you say, the son can do nothing unless the father shows him. <laughs> right now, this morning, I know I'm standing here because the father wants me to be here. I'm not here because um, this is just another speaking opportunity. No, I'm here because the father have put me here. <laughs> I'm going from place to place because the father... I said to him, when do you want me to go back? He says, when I say so. That's it. I stick to that. I will know. The moment when it, the moment break on, okay, I go, I go back home now. Because I'm in the most wonderful place in my life ever, being led by God's Spirit. Isn't that beautiful? And He wants you to live there. Hallelujah. So let's read further on here in this passage. And then He say. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, that even includes you guys with the snow here every year, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Then he says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing which I send it. Isn't it beautiful? What a beautiful passage that is. It shall prosper in the thing in which I send it. Can I tell you what the thing is? It's you. You're the thing. Who's the Word? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
in him was life, and the life was the light of man. So God sent His word into us, which is Jesus Christ. Amen? Woo! From heaven, where rain comes from, and when Christ comes and lives in you, guess what? This is when the provision begins from the spirit dimension, where you live from the spirit dimension. Right now, you are inseparable from God's kingdom. You are inseparable from the spirit world through Jesus Christ. And He will send it into the, this thing, and this thing will prosper. Say prosper. That means prosper intellectually, emotionally, prosper in relationships, prosper financially, prosper in every area. And God got a journey for you to go on to. Isn't it beautiful? He say, when he, he say, and this is the covenant that I will make with you after these days, He says, after those days. I will make a new covenant with you. He says, I will put my laws in your heart. That laws is not the laws of Moses. It's not the laws of, 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 um, uh, of the elementary world. It's, it's the laws of Christ. It's the, the, it's the perfect law of liberty that the Bible talks about. It's the law of the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus that have set me free from the law of sin and death. That law, he says, I will put it in your heart. Say, God will put it. That's Christ. How many of you know he fulfilled the whole law? He come and live in us. I will put it in your heart. And I will write it on your mind. So God is the one who writes it on your mind. Not by ink. <laughs> by the Spirit. And God wants to direct you into a brand new journey. Isn't it beautiful? And He writes the plans of that journey on your mind. <laughs> your mind begins to think according to the Spirit. And that is so beautiful. I had, God had to actually bring me to a standstill, slow me down and stop me and bring me to a standstill that I can analyze everything, get rid of things in my life that was not working and things that was going on a, a complete emotional road that was not designed by Him, and begin to put new things in my heart and begin to write it on my mind. So He wants to write on your mind a brand new journey. Isn't that beautiful? Where the, that your thinking changed. So here's the question I want to ask you this morning. Maybe some of you have seen my Facebook post earlier this week. What does it mean to be mature? What does it really mean to be mature? All of us want to be mature. Isn't that true? What does it mean to be mature? What it means to be mature is to begin to think like Jesus thinks. To be like-minded. Isn't that on? Do you, do you think that Jesus thinks this morning in the, in the context of lack? No. As He is, so we are in this world. Do Jesus think in the context of sickness? No. His mind can't go there. <laughs> Are you with me? Because his mind, in his mind, he dealt with that 2,000 years ago. In his mind, he only think one thing, health, wholeness, fullness, prosperity. Are you guys with me? He can't think any other way. It's impossible. If we are mature, we will think like he thinks. Even though we are attacked, this is true. Jesus say, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So the trouble that come against us in this world, it can be rejection, it can be sickness, it can be anything in this world. Those things is coming against you, but that's not who you are. You can't associate with that. You associate with that which He has already done. You associate with the fullness and you begin to think according to what you have in Him. Then... You maybe don't experience the manifestation, manifestation, manifestation immediately, but you will experience the manifestation. Why? Because right now, your whole body is designed and put together by millions upon millions of cells. Did you know that? And the cells in your body is intelligent beings. Isn't that true? So if you think wrong, if you think in the context of, of trouble, good morning, you're welcome. <laughs> so, 
So if you think wrong this morning, if, 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 we, if we begin to line up our thoughts with the troubles in this world, immediately your cells is on alert. And, and it kicks fear into your body. I want to read this, this statement to you um, that, uh, that I wrote down the other day. I was reading a book of, of a guy. Listen to this. The second you begin entertaining, relaxing thoughts, your body become relaxed. How many of you know that it's very relaxing when you begin to think of the reality that you are risen from the dead with Jesus? You've been made alive with Him. Don't you think that is a relaxing thought? Don't you think it's relaxing and you begin to think of whatever is wrong in my life today, it has been dealt with on the cross through Jesus Christ. Amen? It's relaxing thoughts. The instant you begin to entertain worrisome, fearful thoughts, your body becomes rigid and tense as you begin to hold thoughts of, 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 of abundance, of the finished work of Jesus Christ. You begin and begin thinking of yourself in a position of abundance, in a, a position of in His life, being surrounded by this life of Christ in you. Guess what? At that moment, it's like a magnet in your body. It begins to draw everything that is positive into the cells of your body because your cells begin to relax. Here's what I want to read. It is imperative that you begin to think in a new way because as you do, every fiber of your being will become filled with new thought energy. Your body is comprised of millions upon millions of cells and each one of them is influenced in the moment of thought impulses. Isn't that true? So your whole body, that's why, listen, this is why Jesus said, I give you my peace. Not as the world. He said, I give you my peace. Because if we have the peace of Jesus, guess what? The thoughts, <laughs> of your, the thoughts that is ruling your mind and ruling your heart, affecting the cells in your body, and it brings into a, a relaxing mode. How many of you know that most sickness is, is drawn by stress? If we are stressful and stressed out all the time, it, it creates in you sickness in your body. Because your body is not designed to worry. Your body is not designed to struggle in that area. Your body is actually designed to live in peace. And Jesus gave us His peace. Amen? Okay, the next, the next part that I want to read to you guys here this morning. Um, see, many people study the Word of God and they just develop or establish memory. They have memory. Of, of, of scripture. They can quote a lot of scriptures. They know a lot of scriptures. They can reason you out. In the Bible back and forth. Uh, because they know a lot of scripture. But there is a difference. Being having memory. And being conscious aware. Of what you have in Christ Jesus. Are you guys with me? That's why he say in the book of Hebrews. He say. That. Um. If, if the, the worshippers under the old covenant through their sacrifices, through that blood um, of, of the sacrifices, if that would make them perfect, they had no more sin conscience. Are you with me? Because many people live under a sin conscience. And many people think a sin conscience is only the things that we have done wrong. No. A sin conscience is not only the things that you have done wrong. A sin conscience is to live in a state of unworthiness. Live in a state of I'm not good enough. Live in a state of I don't qualify. Live in a state of I don't deserve to be blessed. Can I tell you something? This morning, you deserve what Jesus got. You deserve what He had. As He is, so we are in this world. And if you live in a sin conscience, then there is a subtle voice in you that say. You don't qualify to be blessed. There's in your subconscious is this thoughts of, um, 
You don't deserve to have a good life. You don't deserve to be healed. You don't deserve to be provided for. It's in your whole being. I've seen people standing in healing lines and you pray for the one person and he's healed and another person, he passed by. And sometimes we don't understand it, but in many cases it got a lot to do with, with condemnation or guilt or a sin conscience. That's why Jesus, I love Jesus. Listen to what Jesus do. Under the old covenant, because how many of you know that while Jesus was on the earth, the old covenant was still in existence. Sin was not paid for. And when they, when they let that man down uh, uh, through, the, through the roof, when he was in that little town, he said to that man, Son, your sins are forgiven you. But the Bible said when he saw their faith, he said, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Why was he moved in that moment by faith? Because they were looking at Jesus and identify with Jesus as the grace of God. Isn't that beautiful? So they had faith. People heard about Jesus. What Faith comes by hearing. So he said, son, your sins are forgiven you. So Jesus, did you know that the word forgiveness means to divorce you from? So Jesus says, son, I divorce you from your sin nature. Woo! Isn't that beautiful? He said, son, I divorce you from your sin nature. And what does he do? He don't call him a slave. He call him a son. He brought him into the kingdom. He brought him to the father at that moment. And he said, son, your sins are forgiven you. I divorce you from that thing that is controlling you and, have, and put you in bondage. And I divorce you from that by telling you you are forgiven. And in that moment, he knew what the Pharisees were thinking. And the religious leaders, so because we know what they were thinking, so he said to them, what is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you or to say stand up and walk? It is easier to say your sins are forgiven you. But he said that you may know that the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sins. I say to this man, stand up and walk. That was so powerful in that moment. Why could Jesus do that? Because Jesus knew that that man believed and he knew that that man in that moment know that he was separated divorced from this thing that was controlling him are you with me some people think that that jesus only pay for sin let, let me give you a good scripture in the bible isaiah 53 the prophet isaiah say he was wounded for our transgressions listen to this he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed it's a one package deal it's the same thing when jesus said your sins are forgiven you stand up and walk jesus has forgiven you your sins you qualify to be healed am i right or am i wrong thank you for your enthusiasm this morning <laughs> You, you qualify to be healed. Why? Listen to what Jesus, see, see what the law does and what religion does. This is what the law and religion does. The Bible says that the chastisement for our peace was upon him. You are not punished today. The situation that you are going through, whether it is sickness, whether it is Financial problems, whether it is relationship problems, emotional problems, things in your life is just destruction. You're not punished. Jesus was punished. The chastisement for our peace was upon Him. So the situation that you are in, it's not to punish you. Jesus was punished. Hallelujah. The chastisement for our, you can be in peace today. Because you are forgiven, you can be in peace you can receive today. Amen? Say, I receive. It's for free. You qualify to receive. So the thoughts that we think is so important. So what I've learned lately is that I become conscious of the fact that Christ dwells in me. I'm conscious of the fact that I'm forgiven. I'm conscious of the fact that I'm in the kingdom of God. I'm conscious of the fact that I'm a son 
in my father's house. Isn't that beautiful? I'm, I'm not, I don't have a memory of these things. I'm conscious of it all the time. I'm conscious with Papa Father's presence through the Holy Spirit is in me. I'm, I'm conscious of the fact that I am created in the image of Jesus Christ. And I'm listening and hearing what my Father is saying to me. I'm telling you this morning, the Father loves you. He loves you unconditionally. And He got a better plan and a better life for you than what you can ever imagine. The only thing that He wants us, He say, leave your thoughts, leave your ways. I've made you innocent. I've forgiven you so that you can line up your thoughts and your ways with mine. That's what He is saying. You can think like me. <laughs> you can follow my ways. Be, why? Because I have cleaned your heart out of all those crap of, sorry for the word crap, some of you see this is a cuss word, but I've, I've taken that crap to the cross. That's not who you are. Isn't that beautiful? You are righteous. That means you have a right. Say, I have a right. You have a right to the inheritance with Christ. You have a right to be healed. You have a right to live in fullness and in abundance. You have a right to come out of in emotional pressures that hold you down. Is Jesus depressed right now? No. As He is, so we are in this world. That's not who you are. You know who you are? You are a son of God in the kingdom of God. That's who you are. Begin to think like Jesus. Be like-minded. Yes, the pain is there. Yes, the situation is there. But guess what? As you begin to meditate on Him, and as you begin to think on death, you are conscious of Him in you and what you have in Him. Your thoughts go into another level. And guess what? Your cells in your body begin to relax. And they begin to become enlightened. And it enlightens your whole body. They become enlightened with the resurrection power of Jesus, which is already inside of you. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is dwelling in us, giving us, giving life to your mortal body this day. So your mortal body is being enlightened and made alive. So that means every organ in this clay pot, which is just carrying the life, have to come into subjection of the reality of resurrection power that's in you. Think of it this morning. The Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. Don't you think it can make a, your liver alive? <laughs> Don't you think it can make your kidneys alive? That it function normal? If it can raise Jesus' dead body? Some people think, yeah, but Jesus was completely different. No, He was made a man. <laughs> so that we can identify with a man. Are you with me? That's why He became man. So that we can have something to identify with. If He was God, we got nothing today. Then we could always say, okay, it was God who did that. That put me out of the equation. No, because we have been made one with Him when He became a man. This morning, because of, so begin to think resurrection thoughts. Listen, in that same passage in Romans 8, this is what Paul say. He said, the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. So you maybe have pains in your body. Your kids is maybe off in drugs. I don't know. You, 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 you maybe have marriage problems. You maybe have all kinds of issues this morning. I don't know what it is. You maybe have in yourself some bondage things. Guess what? If you begin to set your mind. Say set my mind. Set your mind on the spirit man which is in you. <laughs> Am I too loud this morning? I'm just excited. But if you set your mind, your thoughts... On the spirit man, which is already in you. The resurrected man is already in you. You set your thoughts on that? Keep on, keep on setting it on that. Yes, I feel the pain here in my arm. Guess what? I'm over 50. Sometimes, where did this freaking pain come from? How many of you experienced it? Like, I drove, I drove Friday, like 1,300 kilometers, 1400, almost 1,400 kilometers. I drive on Friday, and I was... By mistake, took the wrong turn, was caught up in Chicago's traffic on a Friday or 4th of July weekend. 
I was for three hours in that traffic sitting, sitting, sitting. You've seen people frustrated. My patience was tested to the limits, but I'm telling you, I've seen some people, man. Oh my gosh. But, but when I arrived here, suddenly I couldn't bend my leg, my right leg. I couldn't bend my right because of one position that it was, you know, all of the, what is going on with my leg? It's like, it's like you know, and, and you can go to a doctor today. I, when I was um, 45, I went to a doctor and uh, he's a very nice guy. And uh, he go through a list of stuff that is wrong with me. I was like shocked. And everything that he read, because they took a, a thorough test of me, everything he read, he would say, uh, Mr. Swart, you got this problem, but don't worry, you're over 45, it's just wear and tear. Uh, Mr. Swart, you got this problem, but don't worry, you're over 45, it's just wear and tear. No, he go, I said, just wear and tear, how long do I have to live? <laughs> Are you with me? You know, oh no, it's just wear and tear. You're over 40 foot. Don't worry. It's, you're going that way now. I said, whoa. I go home. I said, Lord, this doesn't sound good. The Lord said, no. Why would you concentrate on that? My spirit is in you. Are you with me? Of course. This is an old clay pot. Who cares? In you is resurrection power. Think different. We are transformed by renewing the mind. Some people think I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind. I will have this beautiful character, which is true. It's the character of Jesus. But if you study renewing of the mind, your organs transform. Some people don't believe that. I'm telling you right now. You renew your mind according to the finished work. Your organs better begin to work together. Everything in your life better begin to work together if you think according to what He has already done for us. Because it's a done deal. You are already healed. You are already provided for. You are already free. Say free. You are already free. It's, we just think wrong. And if you sit here this morning and say, Peter, it's so hard. I can't break into that area to think right. i got news for you this morning. You got the Holy Spirit. You got more than the people under the Old Covenant. How many of you know that there was great heroes of faith under the Old Covenant? You are under a better covenant with better promises with a mediator, Jesus Christ. You have the Holy Spirit with you and upon you. The only thing that you need to do is to say, Holy Spirit, help me. I can't. I can't break my thoughts into that dimension. I'm telling you, I was there at a stage in my life that I couldn't break my thoughts into that dimension where I live in health and where I live in fullness. I just didn't, I couldn't do it. Until one day, the Holy Spirit said to me, why don't you ask me to help you? Jesus says, I send you the Holy Spirit as a helper. I said, okay. Help me. Please help me. Guess what? It wasn't two days. The next moment I broke into it. Whoa. I understand it now. See, understanding is on a hard level. How many of you know, like Bud, Bud built this pulpit. This is a nice pulpit. Do you agree with me on that? This is really cool, man. Um, But if Bud had no knowledge of how to work with power tools and how to work with wood, he couldn't make this thing. It would be like a mess. You agree with me? I think it would stand like this. But because he understands, say understand. The moment you understand, you can do it. Oh, I, I got to say it again. It's the same with me. Um, when I went and do my uh, scuba, uh, scuba course, I didn't do a paddy course that is a one day or a four day course and then you basically, they throw you in the ocean and it's actually very dangerous. I went to the military for six months and do a course in Newfoundland, Gander. And uh, I didn't do like the full military course, but the military beat a, did, uh, uh, provided a course for locals. So we did it for six months, twice a week. So what was interesting is, on the final exam, how many of you know the military is normally serious about stuff <laughs> when you do things? 
when we did the, I couldn't do my tables. The tables were, is, is very, those of you who understand diving, tables work on, you were so long under the water, with so much pressure, when you come out, you have to decompress so many hours, so you, you work out your whole, it's a table schedule that you were, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I, I, I said, I'm going to fail this exam. So I pray one day and I say, Holy Spirit, help me here. The next moment as I was reading, it, my mind opened up and I, when I understood it, I could do it. When I understand, say understand. Because understand is heart level. Understanding is not just knowledge on the mind. See, many people have mind knowledge. They have memory. But like, like Bud building this stuff, he has understanding of woodwork. He has understanding of designs. How to He see it in his mind's eye before he built it. He didn't just stand one day and say, boof, there it is. He just, in his mind, he saw this, then he built it. And he understood it. It's the same with healing. You have to see it with your heart. When you understand it with your heart, come on. Some of you design homes. You see it in your heart how you want it. You believe it, voila, on the end of the day and after a year, six months, there it stands. It's the imagination of your heart. The Holy Spirit put it in your heart. You can change your life by just begin to wait and sit in the presence of God and the Holy Spirit begin to put pictures in your heart. Are you with me? Write it on your mind. and You go on a new journey. When you understand it, understanding is on a hard level. Now it means it's going to happen. <laughs> see, if you see it in your heart, listen to me now, this is my last statement that I make. If you see it or imagine it in your heart, your mind thinks you are doing it. Oh, I got to say it again. If you see it or imagine it in your heart, your mind thinks you are doing it now. It sees the picture. Jesus used a good illustration. Listen, listen to what Jesus says. Jesus says, If you desire a woman in your heart, okay? He says you have done it. It's a good illustration. I've, I've seen it. You've seen it. So your mind thinks you are doing it now. <laughs> are you with me? I'm just using as an illustration. Don't come under condemnation here now. All right, because sometimes birds fly over your head and they poop on your head. But don't let them make a nest in your head. Are you guys with me? It's okay that he sometimes flies. You know, okay, okay. Don't build a nest there. See, if you build a nest, you got a problem. <laughs> Are you with me? So, so I'm just using as an illustration. So our thoughts play such a role in this whole thing. So. If the mind set on the spirit is life and peace, then compensation of right th thinking is you begin to delight. So, so uh, is life and peace. So when I begin to see that the presence of Christ in me and that the fullness of Christ is in me and the resurrection power is in me and I set my mind on it, then it's like a compensation. I begin to delight in who is in me and what I have. And the next moment you will say, that pain is gone. Hey, whoa, that relationship situation changed. Whoa, that thing that I lacked, it is fixed. What happened here? Because the power that is in you begin to work with your understanding and your thoughts and it begin to manifest in the natural world. Listen to what Jesus says. My last statement, I promise. Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus says, in his first sermon, Luke 1, 15, Jesus says, The time is fulfilled. I love that. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. God's reign has shown up in the earth. That is what he say. God's authority, God's power has shown up in the earth. That's what he is saying. Whoa! He says, repent and believe the gospel. That word repent doesn't mean me and you come to the altar and cry and say, oh God, I'm so sorry. No, repent means to change your mind, to think different. That's what the original Greek say, metanoia. So Jesus say, the time is for fault. What, what mankind have been waiting for has now shown up in the earth. The time is for fault. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
Think different and believe what I'm telling you. The good news that I'm bringing to you. Isn't it beautiful? So you got to begin to think different when you hear the gospel. Amen. The good news. Jesus said, the kingdom is at hand. What, where, where is the kingdom? What he was saying to them is, say, you look at me, you see the kingdom. You touch me, you touch the kingdom. I touch you, the kingdom touch you. That's why the woman with the issue of blood, when they touched the, she touched the hem of his garment, she was healed. She touched the kingdom. Whoa! Isn't it? So here we are today. How many of you know that we have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of the son of his love? The kingdom is here. It's in us. When I look at you, the kingdom is in you. See, we so easily judge one another on where they come from, how they look, how, how much knowledge they have, all, all that kind of, what is their status in love, in life. We can't do that. Paul says, we know nobody according to the flesh anymore. You are a being that is wall to wall filled with the kingdom of God. God's reign of showing up. Whoa. See, Jesus didn't say do weird things. Jesus just say, lay your hands on the sick. He didn't even say pray. He just say, lay your hands on the sick. Like this guy up in, in uh, Canada, he suddenly just, he's over 60, suddenly he just got a tennis ball that pop out here one day. <laughs> a tumor thing. He said, Jesus, what am I going to do with this thing that sit here? The Lord, and, the, and he read that verse. Um, and they lay, the, lay your hands on the sick. Um, and they shall recover. That word recover means to restore to its former condition. <laughs> and he, he said, okay, how are we going to do this? The Lord said, go to church and let this one person just lay their hand. Don't let them pray. So he went to church. He said to this guy, come here. Just put your hand on. Don't pray. Just put your hand there. And the guy want to pray. He said, stop. Nobody say you're going to pray. Just put your hand there. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It doesn't mean we are not praying. Are you guys with me? But in his case, the Lord said to him, don't let anybody do anything. So he says, keep your hand there. So the guy kept, kept his hand there. And after a while, he said, okay. Two days later, that thing was gone. That thing that was sitting here. <laughs> Why? Because he believed in the kingdom that's in that guy. He believed in the life of Christ that is in that guy. Isn't it beautiful? And if we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. We speak life into situations. It's the kingdom speaking. We are not just human beings. We are spiritual beings. We have been created in the image of God. Isn't that beautiful? Jesus never say, you have to be so good, then I will bless you. He touched the lepers, the downcast, the sinners, everybody. He loved them. You want to see God? Look at Jesus. He accepted everybody. And here you are today. There is nothing from God's side that prevents you from being touched by Him in any area of your life. Amen. Father, we just thank you for every person here, all the precious people that is sitting here today, that's been created, Lord, in your image, that have received the life of Christ in them. We thank you this morning, Father, that that the word is the truth and you have sent your word into this thing and it's prospering. And we thank you, Father, that your word this morning, the seed that was sown, the gospel that was preached, as the word say, faith comes by hearing. As the lady who had the issue of blood, she heard about Jesus. We all heard the gospel today. We just thank you, Father, for restoration this morning in every area. Thank you for wholeness, for absolute restoration. And we give you glory. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.